Uh, good morning, uh, viewers and uh, listeners of Concerned Citizens Media. Thank you again for coming back. Uh, I always enjoy your presence. Today is October the 18th, 2022. I have several news to share with you. Uh, I will start with uh, Antonio Guterres, uh, United Nations General Secretary, uh, warning about the civil war in Ethiopia or uh, expression of a serious concern. Uh, you know, it's this serious concern repeatedly expressed by United Nations, United States, European Union, uh, but they didn't uh, bring any, any uh, credible uh, result for the Tigrayans, uh, for the people of Tigray. Uh, suffering, uh, suffering under uh, military bombardment from Eritrean forces, uh, Ethiopian uh, national defense plus all militia from uh, across Ethiopia plus FANO militia. So, uh, you know, they didn't bring uh, their expression of concern, didn't bring any change to these people. These people have been suffering for more than two years. So uh, I will start anyway with this concern. Also, uh, EU statements on the escalation of hostilities. Uh, so we just, you know, report it, even though it doesn't bring any uh, uh, any difference for the Tigrayan people. And also, uh, there is a setback uh, in that region today, uh, reported by different media. Uh, TDF withdraw from uh, uh, Shire town after several, several days of bombardment, heavy bombardment by Eritreans and uh, Ethiopian National Defense. No, it's a, as, as I said before, it is a miracle uh, for TDF to control that region for such a long uh, uh, two years under heavy, heavy military oppression by Eritrean uh, forces plus all forces from Ethiopia plus the national defense forces. So it's a miracle, really. Let's listen to Antonio Guterres and also uh, the Ethiopian news agency, uh, uh, you know. Let's listen. Thank you again for joining me. <laughs> The UN Secretary General on Monday called for an end to hostilities in northern Ethiopia, where government forces are engaged in fresh fighting with the Tigray People's Liberation Front rebels. Antonio Guterres said violence and destruction there were reaching alarming levels. After a five month lull, hostilities resumed at the end of August. Calls for a ceasefire have been growing. Is the time for the Security Council? The situation in Ethiopia is spiraling out of control. Violence and destruction have reached alarming levels. The social fabric is being ripped apart. Hostilities in the Tigray region of Ethiopia must end now, including the immediate withdrawal and disengagement of Eritrean armed forces from Ethiopia. There is no military solution. Civilians are paying a horrific price. Addis Ababa said on Monday it was ready for talks, but added that its military would continue operations against the rebels. The African Union, which has unsuccessfully tried to broker a settlement, has urged an immediate end to fighting. The United Nations is ready to support the African Union in every possible way to end this nightmare for the Ethiopian people. We need the urgent resumption of talks towards an effective, lasting political settlement. And the international community must rally together now for peace in Ethiopia. The UN has <coughs> said that fighting has prevented humanitarian aid from reaching Tigray, where tens of thousands need urgent food assistance. Hey, what's up, y'all? Marquez Brown here. So I partnered with Best Buy to show you guys all the stuff that I've found that's been the most useful to me in my smartphone. 
ወቅታዊ መረጃ ነው በሰሜን ኢትዮጵያ የተካሄደ ያለውን እርምጃ በተከታታይ መንግስት የሚያስታቸው እርምጃዎች የግድ አስፈላጊ የሆኑት በህዋት ተደጋጋሚ ጥቃት የተነሳ ብቻ ሳይሆን ከሀገሪቱ ታሪክ የጥላቶች ጋር ተቀናጅቶ በሚፈጽማቸው ተግባራት ምክንያትም ጭምር ነው ብሏል። የሀገሪቱ ሉዓላዊነትና የግዛት አንድነት ለማስከበር የኢትዮጵያ መንግስት የአውሮፕላን ማረፊያዎችን የፌደራል ተቋማትንና ታላላቅ መሰረተ ልማቶችን ካሸባሪው ህዋት ጥፋት የግድ መጠበቅ እንዳለበት መንግስት መግለጹን በመግለጫው ተስቷል በመንግስት ቁጥጥር ስር በሆነ አካባቢዎች ሰባይ እርዳታ በተሻለ መንገድ መቅረብ እንዲችልና የእርዳታ ሰራተኞች ደንነት እየተጠበቀ እንዲሆን መንግስት ከእርዳታ ድርጅቶች ጋር አብሮ ለመስራት ዝግጁ ነው እንብላል ህዝቡና የእርዳታ ሰራተኞች ራሳቸውን ከህዋት ወታደራዊ ተቋማት እንዲያርቁ መንግስት ጥሪ ያቀርባል በትግራይ ክልል የሚገኙ ዜጎችን ደንነት ለመጠበቅ በሕግ የተሰጠውን ህገ መንግስት የግዴታውን ለመወጣትም የኢትዮጵያ መንግስት ያለውን ዝግጁነት መንግስት አረጋግጧል አገልግሎቱ በመግለጫው ህዋት ለሰላም ይቀርባል ለተና አማራጭ በመግፋት ለሶስተኛ ጊዜ ከፈተው ጥቃት በርካታ ውድመቶችን ማስከተሉንም እንዲሁ ተቆሟል። ኦኬ። ኦኬ አይ ዊል ኮም ባክ ቱ ዚስ ዋን አይ ጋት ቱ ሞር ቪዲዮ ሴሌክትድ ፍሮም አል ጀዚራ ሶ አይ ዊል ሼር ዳት ዋን አት ዘ ኢንድ ኦፍ ዘ ሪዲንግ ማቴሪያል ሶ ዋት ዘ ዩናይትድ ኔሽን uh general secretary is calling for cessation of hostility to end the suffering of uh people in tigray and the suffering of ethiopians in general to end this war but what ethiopia is saying in on this media uh the the intensification of uh military operation in tigray uh to control the whole uh, Uh, you know region to bring the gray region under their control intensifying the operation so completely different they say you know for the purpose of diplomatic interest they say they are uh, you know okay for peace talk but that is just uh, to play around uh, you know to say for the global community ethiopia is you know okay to settle its issue or so a diplomatic means no no they determined they showed multiple times and uh, let me let me say uh, let me read what you know uh, said on that uh, ethiopian communication agency uh it said the government of uh, ethiopia determined to fight and the capture airports uh, other other federal uh, Uh, buildings and uh, other important structure in Tigray it says also historical external enemies are you know uh, cooperating or working with TPLF to undermine the country's unity and the sovereignty that's why they are uh, yeah, forced to fight they are telling us also they are warning to grants uh, you know to grant they are also excuse me to grants are Ethiopians and they deserve federal protection this is the first time uh, you know uh, i heard this if the grants are ethiopians why they sealed off blocked from uh, you know international community from ethiopians for almost two years no food no basic uh, other basic service no banking no internet no telephone no medicine if they are ethiopians so the government of ethiopia is just cheating the global community and the ethiopians uh, by using uh, you know claim around with words because there is no penalty for anything they say anything they do <coughs> thanks to russia and uh, uh, china in the united nations security council they are warning uh, civilians in tigray and the humanitarian aid personal they say must stay away from military infrastructure and the targets tdf tplf carried out unprovoked third round of attacks against the federal government of ethiopia this is accusation of the uh, from the ethiopian government and uh, the federal government 
protect the safety of humanitarian aid workers and uh, works with them in facilitating aid deliveries to the areas under the uh, under the government control or areas uh, taken from TPLF. So they, they killed humanitarian aid worker and injured uh, two civilians, uh, you know, uh, getting uh, humanitarian aid. So this is, these words are just to play around with the international community that Ethiopia is like uh, following international standards or respecting international law. They, they try to show, but in practice, in actual sense, they are not. They just killed one uh, humanitarian aid worker uh, in the last three days. And uh, it did in the last, uh, you know, before too. So there's, there's no uh, respect for uh, humanitarian workers or civilians, civilians impacted uh, through this war under uh, the Ethiopian and the Eritrean bombardment. So they are now uh, intensifying their oppression for now uh, also expanding, uh, you know, their access to the Tigray region by controlling Shire after uh, the bombardment. Despite Despite so many calls, so many calls, continued calls from U.S., United Nations, European Union to de-escalate, de-escalate the war and come to the table. Let's let's read what the European Union says. <coughs> EU regrets escalation of violence in Ethiopia. The European Union High Representative Joseph Borrell on Monday, deplored the dramatic escalation of violence in the northern part of Ethiopia and the irreparable cost to human life. Uh, reports of intense fighting in northern Ethiopia, including recent offensive around Adi Dero and uh, Shire, stand in stark contrast to the repeatedly stated commitment by both the federal government of Ethiopia and the Tigray People Liberation Front TPLF to be to a peaceful resolution of the conflict, he said, in a declaration on behalf of the 27-member union. The EU called for an immediate halt to the joint offensive launched by Ethiopian National Defense Force in collaboration with Eritrean Defense Forces and a full withdrawal of Eritrean troops from the sovereign territory of Ethiopia. Yes, nice words, but who gonna enforce? Eritrea is not listening. Ethiopia is not listening for almost two years. Do something. Words does not bring any change. The bloc also called on the Tigray forces to refrain from any further military operations and to cease hostilities in neighboring Amara and Afar territories. Further, the AU called on Ethiopia's regional neighbors to contribute to the de-escalation of the conflict and the refrain from any action that may fuel the conflict. Only peace talks can yield a sustainable resolution to resolution of the conflict and a credible path to ensuring Ethiopia's stability, territorial integrity, and prosperity, stressed Borel. The European Union commended and supported the ongoing efforts of the African Union led mediation to convene in the coming days the launch of negotiations between both parties to the conflict. So that is, that is uh, the EU uh, High Representative Joseph Borrell statement on escalation of hostilities in uh, northern part of Ethiopia, Tigray. Uh, but he called on uh, the withdrawal of Eritrean forces 
for the de-escalation of uh, these hostilities, but I don't think Eritrea cares about uh, EU statement or US statement or UN concerns. Eritrea or Ethiopia doesn't care. Doesn't care. Uh, they are waiting for something serious, some serious measure. You know, that's the only thing you can stop. Uh, uh, just by expressing uh, regrets or by expressing your concern. You think Eritrea will listen to you? You think Abiy Ahmed will listen to you? No, no, no. They have already showed uh, their, you know, silence for more than two years. This is from the uh, U.S. State Department briefing today. Let me read what says. This is for the question presented from uh, attendees or a reporter. The reporter asked it like this. The government of Ethiopia said it is going to continue its offensive in Tigray region. UN Secretary General Guterres a few hours ago was saying that Ethiopia is now spiraling out of control. That the U.S. have an assessment is a special Envoy Hammer involved in any effort now? What? How do you see things? So this is a question from a reporter. This is a U.S. State Department person, Mr. Uh, Patel, answering the question. Yes, sure. So, couple of things. First, Special Envoy Hammer continues to be in the region. He's still in the region why the uh, Ethiopian and, and the Eritrean forces taking uh, Shire and bombarding other cities. He's in Addis. He met with members of the government over the weekend and uh, over the past couple of days. We also, throughout this, have welcomed the AU call for a ceasefire and uh, we continue to be deeply concerned over the reports of increasing violence, the loss of life, the indiscriminate targeting of civilians, and the destruction in the conflict in the northern Ethiopia. And we again reiterate our calls, and you saw the secretary speak to this a little. We call on the Ethiopian National Defense Force and the Eritrean Defense Force to immediately hold their joint military offensive and for Eritrea to withdraw its forces from northern Ethiopia. And we further call on the Tigray Defense Force to cease any provocation at this time. It is incumbent on all of those involved to respect and protect civilians and we call on them to allow unhindered humanitarian access to all Ethiopians in need. Interesting call and uh, falling into deep, deep, deep ear. Arturians multiple times told to leave Ethiopia, to leave Ethiopia alone, but they are still there because there is no consequence. If there is no consequence, why they care? Why they withdraw? They want to uh, destroy uh, the Tigray region in coordination with uh, uh, Ethiopia's government, Abi Ahmed. This is, uh, you know, your own government coordinating with foreign entity, destroying his own citizens. So this is uh, from Washington Post, as I said. The uh, Ethiopian and Eritrean forces taking uh, Shire. So this is confirmed by uh, the Washington Post and other uh, medias. So Ethiopian soldiers take strategic city in Tigray amid civilian exodus. Government soldiers seize control of a key city in Ethiopia's northern region of Tigray on Monday after days of airstrikes and an artillery barrage, according to a diplomatic who spoke to witness, witnesses, accelerating an exodus civilian amid some of the most 
intense fighting since a five-month ceasefire was shattered in August. Thousands of terrified inhabitants fearing a repeat of previous atrocities, including gang rapes and mass killing, began streaming out of the opposition-held city of Shire over the weekend, said an aid worker who was among group of people evacuated from the city. He said the wealthy bought bus tickets, a price have shut up from $6.60 to nearly $100. And the crowds of poor families struggled along the highway carrying children on their shoulders who were at the time startled awake by the sound of distant explosions. As buses pushed through crowds, families banged on the windows, begging drivers to take pregnant women or caring children, he said. The aid worker and some other interviewed for this story spoke on the condition of anonymity for fear of reprisal. The renewed hostilities pitting Tigran force against the Ethiopian military and its Eritrean allies have triggered fresh anxiety among diplomats that Africa's second most popular populous nation will remain mirrored in a long, devastating war that will further destabilize the already volatile Horn of Africa region. Shire had been held by force from Tigray, which had been fighting Ethiopia's central government for nearly two years and is a home to about 100,000 residents and another 60,000 people have, who have fled hostilities elsewhere. The city is a strategic crossroads and the gateway to the main highway leading into Tigray's capital, Makali, from west. Its airport could also be used by Ethiopian forces to significantly extend the range and the time in the air of the drones. That's why they rushed to uh, Shire. A Western diplomat estimated that about 87,500 Ethiopian soldiers and 25,000 to 60,000 Eritrean soldiers are engaged in the latest hostilities. Information from hospitals indicated about 5,000 soldiers have been killed in this latest round of fighting, said the diplomat who spoke on the condition of anonymity because he was not authorized to speak to the media. So that is, I said, uh, is a miracle for TDF to survive this huge magnitude of military personnel from Eritrea, from uh, the Ethiopia, national defense plus militia from all over the country, plus FANO, uh, it's, it's a miracle. So credit for this one, the Washington Post. Uh, you got extensive coverage on this one. If you are interested, you can read the Washington Post. So that is uh, about the control of Shire by Eritrean and uh, Ethiopian National Defense because it is a very strategic location for uh, the capital city and also got uh, an airport. <coughs> This is U.S. State Department uh, designation of Al-Shabaab leaders from U.S. State Department. The United States remain steadfast in our support of East Africa and African Union-led effort to counter the threat from Al-Shabaab, one of Al-Qaeda's most dangerous affiliates which has killed thousands of people, including Americans, in Somalia and across East Africa. Today, the Department of State designating five Al-Shabaab leaders 
as a specially designated global terrorist, SDGTS, under Executive Order 13-224, as amended. Mohammed Mohammed Mire is a senior Al Shabab leader responsible for the group's strategic decision making and leads the group's interior wing, overseeing many of the group's activities in Somalia. Second, Yasir Gilles. Yasir Gis is an Al Shabab leader and the commander of the armed wing. the Jabaha, which conduct attacks operation. Yusuf Ahmed Haji Nuro, also known as Giz Ade. Giz Ade is the chief of Al-Shabaab intelligence wing. Aminiat the Aminiat, which plays a key role in the execution of suicide attacks and assassination in the region. Mustafa Ato is a senior Amniyat official responsible for coordinating and conducting Al Shabaab attacks in Somalia and Kenya and has helped plan attack on Kenyan targets and the US, US military compounds in Kenya. Muhammad Mahmoud Abdi Eden is an Al Shabaab leader and was part of the cell that planned the Dusit 2 hotel attack in 2019. Additionally, the Department of the Treasury is concurrently designating a network of nine Al Shabaab financial facilitators. As a result of this action, as a result of these actions, all property and the interests in property of those designated today that are subject to U.S. jurisdiction are blocked and all U.S. persons are generally prohibited from engaging in any transaction with them. So that is U.S. State Department on Al-Shabaab leaderships. Uh, sanctioning them and forbidding uh, U.S. citizens from conducting any kind of business with these Al-Shabaab leaders. <coughs> this is uh, about Russia extensive bombardment of uh, the capital city Kiev, Ukraine. Central Kia hit by Komazi drone strikes, heavy fighting rain in two hot spots in eastern Ukraine. Residential buildings in the Ukrainian capital Kia have been damaged after drone attacks on a central district Monday morning. Kiev's mayor Vitaly Kiltsako said 28 explosive land drones had headed to the capital this morning and while many were intercepted a small number had hit several locations with at least five explosions heard in the city four people are known to have died as a result of the drone attacks including a pregnant woman russia has stepped up its use of at Attacks against attacks carried out by drones in recent weeks with various targets hit in Ukraine, particularly energy infrastructure. Heavy fighting is taking place in the eastern region of Donbass in Ukraine, President Vladimir Zelensky said on Sunday with Ukraine's military, stating that Russia forces were on the offensive around Back Hamad. The European Union approved a military training mission in Europe for thousands of Ukrainian troops and to provide around 500 million euro or 486 million US dollar in extra funds to help buy weapons 
for the war-torn country. The mission, which have a headquarters in Brussels and be under the command of French Naval Office Vice Admiral Harv Pelagin, will initially run for two years with a budget of almost 107 million euros or 104 million US dollars. European Union headquarters said in a statement that the mission's aim is to allow the Ukrainian armed forces to effectively conduct military operations so that Ukraine can defend its territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders, effectively exercise its sovereignty and protect civilians. It said that the EU will provide individual collective and specialized training countries uh, specialized training countries that are not part of the bloc will be allowed to take part in the training effort the aim initially is to train about 15000 ukrainian troops chiefly in poland and germany credit associated press so there is no shortage of money there is no shortage of help for Ukraine. The issue is how you gonna stop the Russians from destroying the country. How are you gonna stop? The US is also providing weapons and the money. The European the same, the UK is the same. No shortage of help. But they couldn't stop this war. This you know the country is you know destroyed. Okay, uh, this is the last one. This is uh, this is good one if you have or if you know somebody has uh, loan student loan so it's open you can apply and also you know it says uh, you can encourage others to apply and uh, the deadline is also uh, let me read it what it says you can now apply for student debt reliefs up to twenty thousand if you receive a pay grant and up to ten thousand dollar if you didn't receive a pale grant the application is simple easy and you don't need to log in or provide supporting document to apply so the uh, the information given to apply is studentaid.gov studentaid.gov uh, so uh, the deadline is indicated December 31st 2023 so almost uh, a year and uh, one month or two months starting today and uh, the message from the White House on this one is clearly it says apply now and uh, encourage others to take advantage of this relief yeah so we appreciate the Biden administration to taking uh, you know uh, this bold move uh, to uh, cancel to cancel uh, student debt uh, you know it's not it's not enough but it still helps if you uh, you know take a Pell grant uh, and you can just uh, you know can just get help for twenty thousand if not just 10,000 so still help and take this advantage also campaign for the rest uh, and uh, as Senator Elizabeth Warren and others call for 50,000 that Biden signed on for the 10,000 if you don't have Pell Grant if you have Pell Grant and other form of uh, loan 20,000 so the application is open take advantage if you have one if you don't have student loan encourage uh, others those who have a student loan to take advantage to apply and uh, you know get relief so thank you for uh, listening to me let's uh, see uh, how russia is destroying ukraine uh, on video plus one more uh, france uh, in a protest in France about inflation.
The strikes on Ukraine's capital started early. On the ground, people felt the explosions. In the sky, they could see the attackers. One so-called kamikaze drone approaches its target as Kyiv's air defense systems attempt to shoot it down. Rescue teams were quick to arrive in the Shevchenkivsky district. Firefighters hosing down smoked ruins as people who'd taken shelter emerged from underground. The target destroyed the whole infrastructure of Ukraine. Destroyed infrastructure of our hometown. They have less people freezing in the winter. Less people uh, do it without electricity. They need, the Russians want to make the humanitarian catastrophe in our hometown. And also, at the same time, destroy the buildings. People's homes were destroyed. Behind me is the residential building that was damaged in the drone attack this morning. Now, this neighborhood also has important infrastructure sites in it and was hit by Russian missiles last week. Air raid sirens may have stopped sounding, but local officials say residents should still avoid the area for now. Many injured people, like this woman, were rescued. But others, including a pregnant woman and her husband, were killed. We were in the room when the blast started. We then go out and see the staircases gone, all gone to the ground floor. We waited for alarm to be called off. We were laying on the floor. Firefighters came and they used a ladder to rescue us, one by one. We then ran to the shelter in that building. It was horrible. Many here worry about how quickly they can reach safety. There is no shelter around, the closest in a 10 minutes run from here. We decided to stay home. You might be running on the street and the particles would hurt you. Then, as if on cue, the air raid sirens ring out again. All of us should probably go to the shelter because this is their target. People's constant concern now, if and when this area may be targeted again. Mohamed Jamjoum, Al Jazeera, Kiev. Okay, one more. There we go. This is the last one. France. Protesting the inflation. Life is we're together against inflation, pension reforms, and public services reforms. It's important people are battling everywhere, even in the oil refineries. With what we are achieving here today with workers and political organizations, we are creating a new popular front that will one day take power in this country when the time comes. <laughs> Okay, so these are the videos I selected for update for today. Thank you for joining me. Uh, you know, uh, the France, at least they come out to express themselves, uh, to express their anger uh, about the challenges they are facing in life. Ethiopians, they can do it. They can do it. Their lie, you know, their their leaders are lying. They are saying anything they want. And they are telling them to eat uh, weeds, or if the life is expensive in the city, they are telling them to get out the city and live uh, anywhere or countryside. They can say whatever, but they cannot come out collectively like the France or other countries and demand change or, uh, you know, uh, oppose the inflation. Uh, you know, they just, just uh, eat whatever they get and the silent. They have the right under the constitution to come out and protest the government and or to change the course or to 
you know, uh, say something against the war. Their children are dying. The impact is huge on the Ethiopians, but they cannot say anything. Is a uh, you know uh, uh, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, uh, Abi Ahmed cloud is uh, covering them, silencing them, and uh, the undercover operatives, the federal forces, uh, all the security apparatus. I think silence them. They cannot say. They cannot come out. They can die. Or they can just uh, uh, walk like uh, a crazy man talking about their lives. They cannot do anything. That's the situation in Ethiopia. And, uh, you know, we can't help it until maybe the maximum limit reach. I don't know what that maximum limit. When is the time for Ethiopians to challenge their leaders? When their leaders are lying. When leaders are saying anything. And uh, they cannot uh, uh, hold them accountable. So let me conclude by saying uh, concerned citizens, media, listeners, and the presenter appreciate uh, European Union, United Nations, US, and others expression of their serious concern about the intensified military operation in Tigray. We appreciate that, but we can say that we can say uh, uh, this is not enough to force Eritrean to get out of Ethiopia or to hold Abiy Ahmed accountable. This concern, expression of concern, expression of serious concern, alarmed, they don't bring any change. You need to figure out, especially EU and the US, you have to come up with some kind of mechanism to force uh, Abi Ahmed to stop this war and uh, uh, Eritrean forces to get out of Ethiopian business. You got to come up with some kind of credible action. You just keep saying, uh, you know, uh, we regret loss of life, destruction, or we express alarm no this is not the solution this is just you know uh, giving a green light for Abiy Ahmed and uh, Eritrean dictator uh, to destroy life in Ethiopia you know uh, they are even doing it when your diplomat is in Addis Ababa around the corner that means they ignore you you can do nothing that's why they say so that's all I'm going to say for today. I will be back with other updates. And uh, thank you for joining me. Please uh, be safe. So long, everyone.